Hi everyone, um, this is my second update. Um, it's been, I guess, about a week since I've checked in. Uh, a lot has happened, um, some good and bad. My grandfather had been suffering from a brain tumor since August, um, a glioblastoma. Um, and your heart goes out to anybody who has that because it's horrible, horrible brain tumor. Um, he had had surgery and um, they removed about the size of a grapefruit from his head. Uh, mind you, he is 80 years old. And um, he uh, went from being in the hospital to rehab and not being able to walk and pretty much do anything. Um, there's a lot of stress in the house due to, to me, you know, and him being sick. Um, you know, my mom, she's the most strongest person I've ever known. She has lifted her head up high and has done everything. Um, don't mind that, that's the fax machine in the background, <laughs> since I'm in my parents' office. Um, anyway, and, uh, she's just been absolutely amazing. Um, she's my hero. I don't, I don't know how she does it. Um, I look up to her in so many ways. Anyway, um, he was in, you know, a therapy or whatever, and he couldn't do any physical therapy at all. So he ended up having to, I'm going to talk as loud as I can right now because that's the fax machine. <laughs> but he ended up not being able to do that. So unfortunately, we had to put him at home. This was a man that was so healthy and vibrant and happy in life and always smiling and um, had just lost my grandmother about a year, it'll be two years this January. So, you know, now my mom lost my mom and now... Um, Unfortunately, this past Friday, we lost him to the cancer. Um, it's been a really hard weekend, um, but I had some great friends and family that made it better. Um, sorry, I'm going to try not to cry. They came over on Sunday, and uh, we had like a party for my husband, his birthday, that we were, had already been planning, and then had something for um, my grandfather to celebrate his life. You know, we didn't, we didn't want to sit around and feel sad. He was such a great person, and the emails and cards and everything we've gotten from people have been, like, overwhelming. I mean, I've never seen anybody so loved and cared for. Um, he was really special to everybody around here. So um, my only regret is that I didn't get to see him as often as I'd liked because I was sick, you know, which is, like, you know, the hard thing about this when stuff happens like that. I really didn't get to see him that often. Um, but, you know, I know he's in heaven. He's smiling down with my grandmother right now. And, um, you know, he sees me online here talking, and he probably thinks I'm absolutely crazy because <laughs> he always thought this stuff was so funny and, you know, completely out there. Um, but on a good note, uh, I lasted all day Sunday. I hosted the party myself, and I could not believe it. I was on my feet for more than six, seven hours, and I definitely paid for it. Um, I, you know, but not as bad as I thought I did. So I don't know if I'm turning the corner. I'm really hoping. It's been a really hard, how many months is it now? Since March, almost nine months. Um, it's been a, a really hard, tough couple months. And, um, you know, so maybe I'm finally turning the corner. I don't know. Uh, it's been a good couple days. Today's the first day that I woke up feeling pretty sore. So uh, I'm just like really tired right now and, you know, ready to go for my, go for my nap, my daily nap. Um, so that is my update for this past week. Um, to get back to some of the story, you know, my story is so long. Like I, I couldn't even fill in all the details of everything that has happened to me since I've been 11. Um, you know, with getting sick and everything and... I know you Limeys understand about being in and out of hospitals and, you know, nobody believing you and nobody understanding how one day you could be somewhat good and walking and the next day you can't even get out of your bed. And there's days you go to bed and you're scared to get up in the morning because you don't know, are you going to be able to walk when you get out of that bed? Are you going to be able to even talk correctly? Um, you know, it's hard because, uh, it's a disease that's not out there and it's not something t people take quite seriously yet. And the sad part is there has been studies that it is becoming more epidemic than AIDS. 
And that's a really scary thought because people really need to start taking this seriously. You know, there are people out there that are so much worse than I am. And I mean, children I see come in my doctor's office. It's very, very heartbreaking. You know, four and five year olds, you know, who unfortunately their mothers had given birth and it had passed on. Now that, by the way, can be a very rare thing. Um, there are studies that I passed through the breast milk, which is one of my whole reasons as to why I'm constantly going back and forth about what I'm going to do about having kids. I want kids so bad. I mean, if anybody knows me and who knows me, knows I adore children. I mean, I used to try to work at daycare centers and um, through the years, you know, when I used to go from job to jobs, and of course my jobs never lasted more than a month to like a year. And, um, and I always went sick as a dog and half the time spent most of my days homesick from work rather than being at work. Um, but you know, where was I going with this? <laughs> this happens sometimes, I'm sorry. Um, but you know, it's just one of those things that's really, really tough because people just don't, don't get it. They just don't. And it's frustrating that we can't even rely on doctors. It's like if, you know, you have you know, something like cancer, you go to the doctor and they have a plan for you. They know what to do for you. They have an exact treatment for you. All these doctors right now, these Lyme doctors, are fighting over, you know, what treatment is best and what's not, you know, best and what's correct way to go about it and way to treat it. And some are completely aggressive and some aren't aggressive enough and some fight over that. And it's so frustrating as a patient because you just want answers and you just want the treatment that's going to help you and I myself feel that frustration sometimes I mean that's why I'm constantly reading books I mean on every I mean you should see the stack of line books I have it's ridiculous I mean that's all I read my mom's always like you need to read something funny and entertaining and but you know there's times too where I can't read so that's another frustration of mine you know and that's part of Lyme um, you can't focus I mean there's times I've got to reread a page three four times because I can't sync the information in my brain it just doesn't want to stick so you know you have to be your own advocate that's what I'm telling you as a person with Lyme you have got to get out there you've got to search research you've got to you know read up on the books because you can't rely completely on these doctors and I have nothing against the doctors out there trying to help us because they know as much as we know, whatever we know scientifically and in studies, you know, and they're there to help. And let me tell you, those Lyme doctors, they are amazing. What they go through, I mean, they have insurance companies after them every day trying to take their license. And there has been so many cases of these doctors getting their license taken away. Why aren't they going after doctors who are making the same malpractice, you know, problems in their own office? That I don't understand. Somehow there is something going on where our doctors are getting pinpointed by the insurance companies and it's got to stop because as patients, we're the ones suffering because we're not getting the treatment we need. I mean, I had 29 days of coverage with my PICC line. 29 days. That's nothing. You know, and my parents are helping me and my husband afford to pay for my treatment. And that shouldn't be that way. I mean, we've spent thousands and thousands of dollars. And over the years, we've probably, over the years since I've been 11, probably spent over probably a million. I mean, it's got to be at that at that point. I mean, between hospital states and doctor's appointments and running me everywhere. I mean, it shouldn't be that way when you get diagnosed with Lyme. You know, I think the really sad part is when I got diagnosed with Lyme, I was so relieved to have a diagnosis. And I thought, this is it. I'm going to be cured. You know, and it's not that way with Lyme. It's just not, unfortunately, it's not. So, you know, you have to look for the answers and you have to find the right doctor. And you have to take care of yourself. You need to exercise and take your vitamins and do what your doctor asks you to do. You know, but it's just frustrating as a patient. It really is. And, um, you know, that's that's my just on the whole thing right now. <laughs> this is my, my second story. Um, of how I feel about everything and this is primarily about you know the doctors and the way we are treated and I something's got to change and you know this under the skin video if you have not seen it see it buy it borrow it from somebody else it's um, under our skin.com please take a look um, it is a documentary on people with Lyme and it is the best thing that anybody could have ever done um, and hopefully this is a way to get out there, and hopefully this is a meetings to an end. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.